Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Schnozcast. Your host tonight, Bob, Corey, Nick, and Todd. Alphabetically, Corey, how are you? Oh, hello. Nick, how are you? Good evening. I'm good. How are you, sir? I'm good, sir. Todd, how are you? Shim sham to catch a pan, baby. <laughs> Sounds about right. What the fuck? All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, ah. if, you're, if you're new to the podcast, welcome all. Welcome one and all. If you're returning, thank you for sticking with us. Uh, we promise to make it worth your while. Uh, if you want to go back and check out previous episodes of the podcast, you can find us out anywhere where you can uh, get a podcast. Uh, if you want to subscribe to us, apart from Apple Podcasts and all the other places where you get a podcast, you can go to the executive version, where uh, most of which we stream live to uh, every Saturday, uh, such as Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitch, and TikTok. Or if you are of the uh, emailing variety and you'd like to send us a uh, an email and ask us an existential question, um, why is the uh, why is the sky blue? Um, why does Nick vape? We'll be happy to answer those questions at schnozcast at gmail dot com. If you don't like emailing, it's too much work. Um, you have to go on to the wife's computer to do your email versus going on to text, which you can do on your phone. You could text us anytime, day or night at 618-SHOCKER. Or if you don't want to do the 618-SHOCKER line and you're a native of Michigan and you like texting a 313 area code, you can also text us at uh, 313-552-0566. Shorty. There you go. We'll fill you in on the after. Yeah, no, I understand we're getting <laughs> yeah. too many text messages too many to text. the shock line. Right. There's, there's a whole other thought process behind yeah, it. Yeah, we you. don't really know why we're not getting a whole lot of traffic to the shocker line. And so we thought, Corey thought, maybe uh, it's because they're not comfortable with texting a number that uh, with an area there, code that they recognize. There, there, there's a, a, it's a not whole, toll free. There's a bunch of other reasons. Yeah. It's, a whole, yeah. it's a whole thing. I, I uh, completely trust both of your decisions. So, Oh, I'm definitely going to clip that out and put it on the board. I'm like I said both. <laughs> He knew I was excluded from the decision. Because I he didn't totally hear, did. I didn't hear you piping in saying how great it was. So I assumed this. He was, was looking for your backup, and he, and you did not provide it. Sir. Shocker! I assumed this was something they put together themselves. <laughs> shorty, exactly. All right, boys. Uh, I got a question for you, and and that is, uh, I know uh, some of us here are of an advanced age, like Todd. Others are younger, on the younger side. Um, you know, pushing 40, pushing 40, just past 40. You know. <laughs> but all of us should so be still f- old heads. <laughs> all of us should be <laughs> should be familiar with uh, the term Napster. And the concept of file sharing, you know, once upon a time when the Internet was young, when uh, the world was the world was a better place to live in. <laughs> <laughs> it was flat. It was a little bit flatter. <laughs> it was flatter. <laughs> um, there were, uh, you know, le- people. People had uh, people were carefree. Let's say they had, they had very few problems to deal with, and uh, all they really wanted was the ability to go get an album without paying for it. They found <laughs> <laughs> so basically people wanted to steal shit. Yeah, basically it was the it was the concept that was was born that uh, there was a service called Napster that came to prominence uh, in a file sharing platform that surprisingly it, it took a little bit of intelligence to to install the the pieces on your computer to be able to download files in uh, in bits and bytes so, uh, and, the bits and bytes and people were stupid how many bits computers. in a byte uh, 1028 no 1024 eight. sorry no there's eight bits in a byte sir Oh, thanks. I'm not sure why you asked me that. You're welcome. <laughs> Glad we got that out of the way. Uh, so, you know, people wanted like, oh, I want, I want that new um, Chumba Wumba album. Or hell yeah, <laughs> I want. Who wouldn't? I want to stream uh, the Matrix in 1999. I want, I want to copy that, and I don't feel like paying for it. Hang on, real, real quick. Since Did you, Chumba Wumba you... precede Napster? 
I don't think it did. No, they did not precede Napster. Napster came first, <laughs> then Chumbawamba. Yeah. Let's be clear oh, about yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So so you, you quoted 99. Yeah. What, what year did Napster come out? That's a great question. And uh, the, the good folks at Google are going to provide the information to me right now. Because I feel like 99, I feel like that was already kind of late in the file launched, sharing. Launched on June 1st, 1999, Corey. It was launched in 99? Yep. I feel like it was much earlier than that for some well, you reason. Well, you really are old, Bob, and antiquated. You're not using DuckDuckGo? <laughs> I only use Bing. Bing. That's where oh, I get my goodness. news, my facts. You're hurting my soul. And you're calling me old. Dude, which one of us is coming with the info here on Napster? Is it me or you? I'm happy to turn it over to you, sir, if you'd like. That's what I'm I thought. just trying to figure out why it is you're still using Google. So, okay. Why I'm still using Google? Okay, you're right. Google is a, uh, it's on its way down. It's it's definitely in the uses that twilight shit? of its life as a search engine. Um, so, folks, guys, all of us, in, in, in back in the day, who used Napster? Or, or any sort of a bit torrent type of a client to get stuff. And, and believe me, you're not going to be prosecuted for this. I'm not setting you up. So you said it's a sting yes. operation. <laughs> go, go, go. Who <laughs> exactly. used, I'm, who I'm used like, file sharing in any as way? The, as the one person of color on the podcast, I did not. <laughs> Todd, I just saw a bunch of ropes start swinging down behind your window. I think there's guys about to bust <laughs> in that room. I know. I know. That's why I'm like, no, I never heard of it. Never heard Flash. of Napster. Corey. Flash bang goes off. <laughs> Corey, did you ever use file sharing in any way? I did. So we, we use Napster for, uh, it was a little bit, but then LimeWire became the number one file sharing site that everyone started. That was the one you used the most? Because I think Napster had already been shut down and LimeWire kind of took over. And I, I don't know, there was something, something that they did that it wasn't exactly like Napster. So they're like, oh no, this is actually legal. And yeah, come to find out, it, 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 was, it was it was the exact same thing as Napster. Right. Okay. Nick, how about you? Uh, I knew a lot of people that did. I never personally uh, partook in any sort of illegal activity myself. Gotcha. It, thank you. Todd, Question same did. thing as, as a black man? Yeah, absolutely. No, don't even, <laughs> don't know about any file sharing of illegal files, documents, music, movies. No, All no, right. No. So what, what, so you, but you were aware of file sharing. I was aware of it. Okay, what were your thoughts on? I was aware because actually, actually, as I recall, you actually configured a f- several file downloads when you were at my house. When I when you, I think you stopped <gasps> over to check on some cats at one point and uh, facilitated some file downloads on my behalf. Todd had to wipe that hard drive so, and so to- Todd's burn it. Todd's sense of time is uh, utterly skewed. What year was this that I did that? Mm, around the 2005-ish timeline? 2005. No, this this launched in 1999, late 90s. I understand when it launched. I'm yeah. telling you when you, there is a time, I, I, I can, I don't, I don't want to to drag down this podcast show for sure. the specifics, but I will, I will walk you through down memory lane of what you did to me during that time. After the cast, but oh. yes, in 2005, uh, you did uh, sabotage me and set me up for failure. What'd you do to him? Apparently, we're not going to hear it. It's going to be he napstered me. <laughs> it's going to be an, it's going to be an after party. He Zuckerberg you. <laughs> he shared you with friends. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, I'm not sure if I want to put this up on the screen, but I guess I will. Uh, it was a very good comment at first until the. Second half of the comment that I was like, I don't know. Is if this I want to put Mary this up Dillon? There. Yeah, of course it is. Okay, so she's commenting while she, her her she, better half. She said, "I I use Google and still have an, a Yahoo email as an address. Uh, if it ain't broken, welcome back, Nick. You suck." Mm, well, that's not what that's she said. Directed to you, I think, well, sir. The words were, <laughs> "Welcome back, Nick. They needed you." Smiley face. Oh, that's that's, that's that not at all. Joking. That's that's did Mary's I, idea did of a joke. I, miss, I, did I miss you might have mischaracterized that huh. that uh-huh. that statement. Oh, I, my bad. Sorry, Mary. Good Is that thing. Bill Shakespeare over there? <laughs> oh, are you gonna get that uh, <laughs> prescription check? Yeah. I don't know. I can't tell, Dad. Is that Bill Shakespeare over there? <laughs> Luckily, you put it up on the screen for everyone to interpret themselves. I did. Excellent. <laughs> so your your well, stance. You, so I guess I'm I'm clearly talking to Corey because. 
the other two co-hosts of mine never partook in this highly illegal activity. But your yeah. thoughts on those um, bands that, like Metallica, who came down very hard against the fans and uh, and uh, Napster for sharing their work. Um, what were your thoughts Without at the time it. about that? Uh, well, see, uh, you, you caught me with at the time because – Yes, yeah, at guess, the time, guess, not today. Guess who's file sharing now all day long? <laughs> Fucking Metallica. Yeah, for sure. So they finally realized. Well, because they're, they're, they're finally getting paid for it. Yeah, which, yeah. but uh, again, uh, there were not many musicians that were, I mean, you were losing out on a couple album sales here and there. It, it wasn't like it was billions of, it, people were still buying albums and artists were still getting paid. If you happen to download it for free, you download it for free. I, it, it is what it is. I, I, I don't feel bad for ever doing it. Uh, I don't think anyone should. If, they, if it was out there and, you, and you, it's available, I, that's fine. Point, but, counterpoint. But, but again, I, and, and to be honest with you, ha- half the stuff that I downloaded, it wasn't even like I, I probably never would have even bought their album anyways. It was all porn. Well, Just because it was free, line. you're like, sure. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, I'll listen. And have, I might have downloaded it and, and listened to it for a week and then been like, I, I don't even like this and deleted it off the, the entire playlist. So, But do you think that there might have been some albums that you downloaded in that way that you never would have paid for it? And maybe you discovered some artists that you still follow today because of that? Oh, plenty. Yeah, there was plenty of people that, that I, I would discover and come across uh, from just random downloads or, you know, things that were suggested. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I I probably never would have even thought about them or listened to them before. Right, uh, but yeah, it, it it turned me on to the, to certain people and, and artists that I thought were fantastic. So in the, in that sense, it it was definitely a good thing. Like I, and again, not that I w- would have ever even gone and got their album, but right now there there's still people I listen. To. I think it, OER was actually one of the the people I came across on uh, LimeWire, and I yeah. go, I I go and see starting their, a lo- lifelong love and relationship. Yeah. And, uh, you and your wife. We uh, we go see their their O-R. concerts all the time anywhere they're near Detroit, we yeah. go and 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 I've I've probably given more money to OAR now than I ever would have when LimeWire and Napster was around, and uh, if I was going to pay for the album, I I like I said I think we've been to at least twelve of their concerts now. Yeah. So. Did you yeah, buy I, twelve I T-shirts? It, <laughs> we paid on the merch, baby. The you, merch. We, 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 we absolutely. We have we have, we have, t- we have t-shirts. t-shirts. Danielle actually has a um, a set list. That they signed, and she she purchased that. So and I, that was not even a t shirt price. I I was like, well, even when she was buying that, I'm like, mm-hmm. but again, she we love them, and it's that came from. Now looking back on it, that came from LimeWire. But you're kind of a poster boy then for people who. <laughs> For, for, Thank for, you. Hold on, I'm not done yet. For criminals, <laughs> you you can crim- in, you can insert your straight. own your your I, own conclusions. I always there. looked at myself as a pinup boy. Oh, yeah, man. the before poster, a poster wow. boy for <laughs> using the service, uh, but it resulting in something that it, it created a relationship between you and the band that was far stronger than ever would have been otherwise. Yeah. Yeah, you can say that. I did say that. I guess and then there we go. <laughs> everything everything has been settled. All I, right. I feel, Napster was good. I feel yeah. like it is. <laughs> uh, so you know how I, I know that Nick was ready to move on from this? We've already done the no shot. No one's talking about it but you and Corey. We've already done the shot. <laughs> and and Nick literally like grabbed his shot Thank glass, you, Nick. which was empty. And he's like, he <laughs> threw it back again. Like maybe there's a couple of drops in here. I'm also an hour late, so I'm like, okay. This there was no be- shots at Phantom of the, Phantom of the Opera? No. Ah, oh, sons see, of bitches. <laughs> you, you, should, you didn't see it at Masonic Temple then, apparently. No, I saw Did- it at the Trenton Community Theater. Yeah, fuck that. Oh, you, you could have walked it. right in there with a fireball. <laughs> oh, yeah. You got a little Trenton flask in your pocket? Down River Ho. That's right. <laughs> Dude, yeah. Trenton. I'm, su- I'm very surprised they weren't serving fireball there. No. I, thought, I thought you guys were like in downtown Detroit. It's the Down River Youth fucking association that puts yeah, it on they're not boy. serving booze Trent I mean, town. you can make a little more money Trent town. parents parents everyone if you want to go out and get your booze in the hallway for intermission <laughs> come back in I, and then pick up it, your teenagers it was in the trunk and, and coolers nick <laughs> i bet you any it was money in the they, trunk and coolers nick they would have made a lot more money on that show 
No, I'm responsible. I'm going to drive 40 minutes home from there, so didn't make sense. He's nothing if not responsible. Down river. All right, so we're going to move on right river, now to, uh, to our next segment. Drum roll, please. Thank you. Uh, 90 Second Sports for Todd Dillon. And we see him heading in that direction. The 20. He's going for 40. And it's 90 Second Sports. All right. Uh, I'm going to take care of a shot, unless Nick liked to do it, since he just took uh, his... Yeah, I'll get a beer, too. There you go. Yep. Took his headphones off. Uh, and I'm going to pass it over to you, Todd Dillon, with Corey's help. So, Todd, here are Indeed. the rules, buddy. Yes, sir. You have a Tell video that, that you sent me. I have it queued up. I did. We have eliminated ready. the YouTube ads. Yeah, I let's like be it. let's be clear. You have 90 seconds for sports. However, the video that you've asked him to queue up is more than 90 seconds. So the good people... I don't think that it is. The good people at the Schnozcast uh, home office have determined that your time does not start until the video ends. No, no. Okay. He's talking over it. I'm ready. Oh, for sure we're doing that? Yes. So you got any seconds, that's it. Oh. Oh. Let's do, no, Why don't we put this right? in front of the people who are listening to this podcast? Cue it up, tee it up, give me 90 seconds, and tell me the rules, baby. All right, well, I think we just covered the rules. Um, let me bring, cool. uh, bring up the other screen here, and I will put 90 seconds on the clock. Todd, when I say go, that is when you go, sir. All right, I'm trying to do a couple things at once here. Are you going to count to three first? You want to count down? Yeah. All right, all right. Three, two, one. Go. Don't well, watch the video. Just start talking. The clock before you even said go. What? what? This is some bullshit. Anyway, this week, what an amazing last weekend in sports. Scotty Scheffler won the freaking Masters. Bravo. Finally a good guy. Although I do root for Justin Johnson because that guy can play golf. He can also steal dudes' wives on tour. Love myself some Scotty Scheffler. What a great Masters tournament. But if you really, really, really want to talk about sportsmanship, really, really talk about sportsmanship, you can go to Caitlin Cook. That's what that's what uh, Corey calls her. I call her Caitlin <laughs> Clark. But uh, if you want to talk about sportsmanship. It happens. You, <laughs> you, want, you want to talk about this man on the screen right now, Bobin. From the Houston Rockets, this mofo, during a real, legit game that people get paid for, intentionally missed his second free throw so that all the fans at the at an away game could get free chicken. That dude just gave the whole crowd free chicken for missing a free throw. Is that what he that did right there? That is the type of sportsmanship that we... Yeah, th th w w I don't even understand what you're asking me, Corey. And you're eating into my 90 seconds that you already stole three of. <laughs> I'll anyway, give you, I'll give you time. Scotty Scheffler, Bowman, two of the greatest moments in sports history. A man missed a free throw in a game that actually counted so that the fans at an away stadium, at an away stadium, not his home stadium, we're not talking about practice, at an away stadium during a real game, this man missed a free throw so that everybody in the stands could get chicken. That's what I call sportsmanship. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. And Caitlin Cook, Caitlin Clark, whatever you're going to call her, you should join the Excellent. big three, sir. All right. Fantastic job. That's an amazing job, Todd. Thank you for that. I love People how, like, you've, I love I how the, video, the, the, the NBA video was playing for so long before you ever turned to basketball as a topic. <laughs> Bob and I were all sitting here like, wait a second, what's he doing? He was talking for a good 25 <laughs> seconds about golf. I don't know how there's a 15-second delay. And the timer on the Facebook screen ended before I, Corey hit the end button. Because I was generous today. Uh huh. And I gave Todd a little extra time. I guess so. He went, the cats after he away. stole three seconds on the front end, Nick, he and stole from the, me at the beginning. You guys had all the opportunity in the world, the Nick Free podcast, to have it all about sports if you wanted and to suck up all the fireball Nick. you wanted. And, uh, I guess he didn't fucking strike while the air. I know. So. I'll, I'll, I know. I'll never pull you over to the dark side about sport unless I do it when you're here. I don't so see the world in I terms of color, so I don't like that reference. <laughs> <laughs> Todd, grab a shot. Let's do one, brother. Dark side or light side? Let's do a shot. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Thank right, you, Mr. Ian. Bob, this ain't getting any fucking warmer. So yeah, here we go. Colder. 
Why are you guys getting cold? Oh, and warm? did I mention I'm not sure DJ was boning is. other players' wives on the, on the nod tour? Nod to him. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Jesus. Cheers. Salancha. Woo. Corey, we got anybody in the chat asking questions? <sighs> no questions yet. Hey, I'm surprised you didn't ask me, Bob. But thanks for asking. You got to have people in the chat to get I'm drinking, questions. <laughs> Hold I'm on, Todd. Todd, what, Todd, what, are, you, what, are, you, Todd, Todd, what are you drinking? Be- beer and, and liquor. I'm drinking Crown Apple today. And for my beer, I'm drinking a little Fremont Brewing. Sky cracking. A little hazy pale ale, baby. Did you finally finish that uh, peppermint spiced apple uh, whiskey bullshit you were drinking? The Winter Jack? I don't even yeah. know what the hell you're talking about. The Winter Jack. Did you finish that? I'm drinking... I'm drinking Crown Apple, baby. Crown Apple. No, 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 no. I get. I, I heard what you're drinking. Did you finish the Winter Jack? I'm sorry, Bob. It's hard oh, yeah. to over no, here. Co- I'm drinking Crown weeks ago. Apple. A couple weeks ago. <laughs> a couple, a couple weeks, weeks ago. ago. That trash. All right, so it's fair to say, Corey, that I don't think we're going to see the return of the Winter Jack. Todd has actually moved on. Know. He he secretly told me, texted me early this week. He said he's had the peach. He's tried the blackberry. The apple is always a, a good staple. But he's moved on now to CMP. And I said, CMP, what, what is that? And he said, it's Crown Machu Picchu. <laughs> and I said, oh, my <laughs> God, Todd. What the fuck? Are you kidding me? It's like they're singing your song. Like they wrote it right for you. Wow. Exactly. Ladies Crown and gentlemen, Machu Picchu. if you've never seen anyone set themselves up for a softball, Congratulations. You just watched it happen live. <laughs> the crazy part is, is all the years you guys have known me, like you're sit- you're on the edge of your seat with bated breath, like, no, ah, no, I wonder I, what no, they talked I, about I, this week. I, <laughs> you're like one edge of like my a seat? Jim Henson character. No. <laughs> all right, but I will say, even though Corey's uh, currently uh, got his hand on his pants, um, for anybody who's uh, Hey, and on- Ian's in the room. Anybody, anybody, hello, anybody, hello, Ian. Anybody who's in the room, YouTube, hello, Ian. You, YouTube or Facebook, we are uh, entertaining all of your questions tonight. Uh, as long as they're not of politics or religion, some other topic, not those two, mm-hmm. we will take all comers. I'll answer any question, even mm-hmm. politics or religion, especially feel, politics or religion. Those, we will question. field those questions better. Why do you point <laughs> yeah, to him when you, you say all comers? There was an episode we did that, that I, he, Once he, was saying, time. he was yeah. saying... All comers so much. I was just like, okay, we need to serious? stop. Yeah, I'm like, uh, take all Did comers. I, was I here? We yeah. will take oh, all okay. comers. Okay. Is, yeah. a, you is, a, comers. is a phrase, a- including Caitlin Cook. Yes, good old Caitlin Cook. Yes. <laughs> all right. So um, before we get into the next segment, uh, I wanted to bring this up because uh, you know, every once in a while, fellas, we we end up surfing the web and falling down a, a deep rabbit hole, and it's literally uh, hours before we come out of it and we're like oh fuck i've wasted like way too much time deep diving on this topic that nobody gives a fuck about including me but somehow i got roped in so my question to you guys is what is the rabbit hole that you found yourself falling down in most recently that you can remember or the one that first comes to mind Corey. <laughs> first of all uh ryan bro hello hey ryan bro welcome so, should i call him ryan hello bro? yeah that's that that's the <laughs> name on the uh uh-huh. okay Hello. Um, Hello. So, so there, there's two of them that are very specific and very weird. <laughs> that That's exactly how rabbit holes should be. Specific so and weird. It's on TikTok, and now, now my algorithm, that's all it is at a certain time of night, there's only two videos or two two people that show up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the first Wait, one. Wait, can we, can we guess them? Feel free. These are <laughs> yeah. okay. These are people. This, uh, oh, no, no, okay, well, okay. So one one is a person. Yep. The other is a um, it's more of like a a group or an idea activity. All right. Can, can I guess the person? Todd, do you want to guess the person? You guys are never going to guess this. By the way, I can guarantee you. Uh, no, I I I don't want to guess the person. I thought it was an activity. I was going to say you know the the catfish fisting. It's going to be the thing. <laughs> catfish fisting. Nope. That is know. that is not it. I, I retract know. my previous <laughs> offer to guess. I I'm not, pretty, never going to top that. Pretty sure they call that noodling, Todd. <laughs> that's 
Good. Go catfish fisting. I don't think anyone's ever in the South said, hey, y'all want to go for some catfish fisting? Thank you, Todd. I feel like we've got the episode title well in hand. I feel like someone has said that in the South. <laughs> Jeez. Corey, go ahead. Who is it? Uh, okay, so the, the, the first uh, not as weird one, it's this guy. He has a company called Vukum, V-O-O-K-U-M, and he goes on 47th Street in New York. And he buys high-end watches and flips them for a profit. So what are the videos of him Him buying them or selling him, them? Him, him like actually going and doing the negotiations uh, with the guys that he's buying the watch from and then also the people that he sells them to. Okay. So it, it, I don't know why I've gotten stuck on that, but the way they, they produce the videos and shoot them, uh, and at, it, it's, it's just become a huge interest to me. <laughs> So that's the first one. Second one, this is the weird one. Uh, it's like AMSI, ASMR uh, massage, and there oh, you you've show, been you've into that for no, a no, while. No, 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 hey, but but I came across a new uh, niche of of this whole ASMR. What's the specialty of this particular niche? So apparently, or niche as some may say. Apparently, in Turkey, they do like weird like head massages and. Body massages. Head massages are weird. No, no. It's but called phrenology. Wrong head, Todd. No, right head. Right. No, no, head. No, okay. no, 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 no. Right head. And it's, but it's, it's just, it's, I, I should. Congratulations. That, that's the, in the running for the episode title as well. Thank you. Right head. Uh, <laughs> but it's just like, they, they do like these full shampoos and like, like five or six different shampooings. That's not and, a massage. That's washing your hair. No, but then they like then all like the guy will take his shirt off and this is I this Wait, is gonna what? sound very yeah I know here we go, uh, like and then he just rubs the guy's chest down with like his hands and different soaps and oils, and uses like these crazy like different things to massage the person that that or the client at, that he has, and I there's something about it that is fucking it's so intriguing to me. Okay. They also have like they have like there's an herbal Chinese one, <laughs> fantastic. That, are these running parallel with the all comers? Just will about. You, will you please send me one of these videos so I, I can see? I, it for I, I I should have had one ready to go. No, no, that, but that's not what this the purpose of this uh, this question was about. But please send it to me so that I can judge, masturbate you. to it. I can judge you <laughs> feverishly based on this segment. <laughs> you got it. All right, so uh, Ryan, bro, yeah, it, hey, hey, man, it's going good. Uh, hope you're enjoying the show. It, it, people say, was this also, question like, how's it going? Well, p- people said the comments started blowing up. I'm, I'm, no, no, backtracking on them. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's fine. No, this morning, pancakes. <laughs> yeah, Ian Cole. <laughs> so his, his question is NBA playoffs. Ian, who's, co- who's, co- Ian. Who's, who's coming out of the West? Oh, Todd Dillon, please. The Nuggets already answered it. Did you? Okay. The Nuggets. They're, I answered it. And then, All right. hey, I'm on top of this, bro. Got it. Joe, I what's mean, up, buddy? Ryan, bro. Stop. Joe. All right. I think we're. I, I, Love the guests, man. We're Love be, the guests. We're caught up right now. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Excellent. Keep those questions coming, fans. All right. Uh, do we get to both of yours? We got the crazy <laughs> yes. massage. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think every, everybody, in the, everybody in the Detroit location, Joe. Nick Bader, <laughs> yes. Uh, any recent rabbit holes that you find yourself uh, falling down? Yep. Okay. I actually have a link to mine if you want to play it. Did you send it to me? No, I haven't. <laughs> Let's do <laughs> it. Let's do it. If you could play that link, let's I haven't sent it. it to you. That'd be great. <laughs> I, I don't. I All think right, while it, he's sending it to you, let's move over to Todd Dillon. Todd, any rabbit holes that you fall down? Joe, we are yeah, 420 yeah, friendly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually, uh, the rabbit hole I felt fell down recently and love it is uh, ChatGPT's Dolly uh, creating art just with uh, text prompts. Uh, so I have, uh, I- I've wasted a ton of time uh, doing, uh, having it create artwork and pictures of Conicorsos and Rottweilers uh, just with text prompts. And I got some pretty cool stuff. I think I sent you guys some of the stuff that I'd created. Uh, with Dolly, so uh, yeah, yeah that's so. the. Oh, I probably uh, thought all, it was just and, and of all your things dogs. AI. Is that kind of what I was doing yeah, last night? All things AI dragged me in. I, I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. I said, "Is that kind of what I was doing last night?" 
Indeed. Remember in the group? Short dudes on the beach. <laughs> in Dallas. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Todd. I, I feel like you, are you moving on to back to, back over to Nick? Yeah. If, uh, okay. Yeah. yeah, this yeah. Was, that, this that's, was, that's the only rabbit hole I've, I've fallen recently. This was my Excellent, most sir. my most recent rabbit hole of a series, and uh, it was pretty interesting. Yeah, you're gonna have to uh, turn sound on so and start it over. I had the sound on, but I don't know why it's not. Uh... That's probably why, huh? Is the length. All right. There's okay. no other measurement. Now, how do we start this over? Somebody stole my voice. You can just, make a bit. Just press, Corey, just start the, just refresh the page. Refresh it. It's really like, oh, look at these old people Crisp trying to use clean, technology. No Still got the sound on. The sound it's is off. Refreshing. Inside our bodies. So we have one dimension, which is just a line. The measure of the line is the length. Okay. There's no other measurement you can right. make of it that has any meaning. Right. right? It does not have a width. That's the now grass. you can add another dimension. That, we call that X. We add a Y. Mm -hmm. And now you have a surface. A plane. A plane. And that it's two dimensions. X and Y. So you can make a square out of that, couldn't you? Yeah. Two dimensional beings who live in that surface to... Everyone else in that surface, they only have an outer perimeter. Right. You can't see inside their bodies. They're all inside the flat plane. They're, they're inside the That's flat all plane. all they can see. All you see is the edge of them. Right, the edge. So medical surgery in a two-dimensional universe, they'd have to cut you open, part you, and then reach in and do what they need to come out and then stitch you up again. Okay. If we live in three dimensions, you get to look down on that flat world and see all the inner guts of every living creature in that universe. Mm -hmm. Because there is no boundary above and below. It's only within the plane itself. You can see the heart beating. You and can he see misspoke the spleen, there. He meant to the liver, say the pancreas, the lungs. You can see Three it all. is what we're in. In Shh. fact... If you wanted to be a surgeon for that world, you could go in, cut out the appendix if they needed appendectomy, and never have to cut through their outer boundary. Mm. You'd be like magically going into their body. Dimensional surgery. Dimensional surgery. They would have no access or even awareness that that was even possible, but you do. Right. And you can go in and rectify that. So now, we are in three dimensions. We reveal our skin in all directions to the other people. Right. So our skin is the boundary between our innards and a medical doctor. If they want to get inside you, they got to cut you open. Right. A four dimensional creature can just look inside our bodies. Oh, I feel violated. I know. <laughs> oh. I hope no one's watching right now. <laughs> God. Anyone from the fourth spatial dimension has full access to your entire body's innards. Oh. They could pull stuff out, put stuff in, operate, whatever. We are the game operation to anybody in the fourth dimension. <laughs> what I'm saying is if you had what you beautifully refer to as dimensional surgery you would be able to operate without ever cutting someone open, provided you come from a higher dimension inward. Right. And it is completely analogous to be a four-dimensional surgeon operating on us without cutting us open, to be we as three-dimensional surgeons operating on two-dimensional creatures because you could just see all their organs just sitting there. Now, we can move forward and back, left and right, up and down. Are we good? Okay. No, it's almost done. Oh, okay. Those are the three spatial dimensions. But the time dimension, you don't have access to the past or the future. We are prisoners of the present. Of the present. Forever transitioning Forever. between our inaccessible past and our unknowable future. But let's think this through. How would you imprison a two-dimensional creature? Draw a line. What kind of line? A square. A square. Just draw a square. That's its prison cell. Yeah. But we say, wait, just step up out of it, and then you escape. Good to go. I don't know what you're talking about. 
I'm fully locked in. Fully locked in. How do we put us in a cell? We have six walls. All right. A ceiling floor, four walls around us. All right. We think we are completely contained within it. A higher dimensional creature said, just step out and then step back in and you're outside the cell. <clears throat> he said, I don't know what you're talking about. Right. Wait a minute. I said a four dimensional creature. If, if we had access to the fourth dimension, which for us is what? Time. Time, but wait, we're prisoners of time. So suppose we weren't prisoners of time. Suppose you could move through time the way we move through space. Could you then escape the prison? Yeah, just move to a time when I'm not in prison. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> just say, let me get out of these six walls here. You just go back to a time before you got put in a prison or go to the future where you were let go from the prison. Right. Each of those counts as escaping the prison without ever breaking down the wall. Right. So time can serve that same role if you had access to the past and to the future. That's pretty cool, man. Of course, we go higher. This fifth dimension, six dimensions. I, I thought this is almost this over. Sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, mathematically, you can calculate what all the proper. Yeah. That's so, my rabbit hole. Huge Neil deGrasse oh, gra Tyson that fan. That's a huge rabbit hole. I, I, I'm, but I'm going to. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw a little bit of shade on him a little bit. Just What's a that? tad, because 10 times smarter than I'll ever be. Mm -hmm. Just this. So, like you said, he misspoke a little bit, but not about the first and second dimensions, because yeah, right. he's absolutely right. Yep. But surgeons actually operate on the third dimension, because we are three-dimensional beings, right? So right. We, have, yep. we, we already know that. And given that time is the defined fourth dimension, mm -hmm. unfortunately, we, we, we only have access to, a, to half of that fourth dimension, and that is the past. We can look backwards. Uh -huh. uh, because we can, we can always connect dots backwards. So, as we advance, though, that's that's the the, the that's life, the world, risk, and uh, taking chances. That is the the other side. We if you can't predict the future, half of the fourth dimension is unavailable. I, I would be curious to know what he defines as the fifth and sixth dimensions. But a little a couple of misspokes in there. I think they, I think they made it a little bit overcomplicated. But I, I'm down with that. <laughs> Ultimately, uh, surgeons operate in a three-dimensional plane which is where we live today uh and then the the fourth dimension we only have access to half of it we have re clear line of sight to the past if we can actually get reliable information about it yeah like what, but what he, was, what he was saying is uh yeah that was the only the only because i had to re-watch it again because he was talking you just rewatched it again no 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 i'm saying he he was talking about the fourth dimension when he should have been talking about the third or vice versa whatever it was but it was just a misstep and uh but that being said I, I like how he broke it down like his, his whole mindset is that you know there could be societies that are you know way 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 more advanced than us and he's saying that like as we would look at a two-dimensional drawing of someone in a box we would say what, what the fuck's the problem you're not in the box you just step out of the box and they're like i don't get it what do you mean? It doesn't make any sense to me. As if they would say the same thing to us about being in a prison. Like, just step out of it. <laughs> you know, like, how? We're surrounded, you know? So it's just interesting the well, way he puts it. I think things, we look know? at it different. Yeah, I, I love the way he puts it, it because it's a, the perspective is this. If you you can see, we, we have access to the history of all beings that preceded us, right? Even, mm -hmm. like, right now, it, it would take... It would take for me. It would take work for me to find out kind of what your day looked like today to get back to get into your history. But if we went back like a year, I could say, "Hey, Nick, if you'd taken this step, if you'd bought Apple stock back in 1998, you'd be a multimillionaire now." That again, that's a part of that fourth dimension because we can we can infinitely look back to the past. It's a little bit harder to get real past real time, but. The, unfortunately, the fourth dimension is kind of our the the human limit, and I don't think that there's an extraterrestrial limit in the universe where they are so far ahead of us. I mean, ultimately, I'm I'm three hours behind you, but our histories are still indelibly linked, even though our our time plane is different. You see what I'm saying? So I think mm -hmm. I'm I love Neil, Neil deGrasse Tyson. In fact, I, I I I've been told that I sound a little bit like him, uh, and so I'll take that. Yeah, I do. People who've said I, it about me, but I, and I, but I love his work. I was gonna say that uh, I kind of feel a familiarity with like when I listen to him because I I'm like this is very Todd esque, but I just thought that was me. So that, <laughs> I love I, I, that I, lo I love Neil deGrasse Tyson. Oh, I love his part. work, and uh, maybe I'm trying to make him 
uh, and be 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 tall like him as well. <laughs> he was a, he was a, we got a shot in front of us. Let's do the shot first. Todd Dillon, you got a shot ready? Oh, I got to get my. I'm getting it. Getting it. Getting it. Getting it. Maybe that's why I enjoy Ooh. listening to him so much. Maybe because it sounds like it's coming from a friend. Maybe. I don't know. All I, right. I swear to God. Your friend. You, I'll introduce you. Uh, I think the it's other, all those big words. The other day I was listening to him and I was like, this sounds like, like a oh, lot like Todd. Speak those big words. Speak it. Speak it. <laughs> Speak the right, word. I'm ready. I like I like the analogous. If you're on YouTube or Facebook and you are uh, watching or listening to us, join us in a shot. Cheers, Cheers, everybody. Salute. He was talking about Todd. He was talking about um. We can't go into the past, but theoretically we could go into the future with that new warp drive that they just. I think basically. it's the reverse. Well, no. He said he said the the new warp the new warp drive that that was just discovered uh we've always been focused on how to speed a spaceship up to travel you know as close to the speed of light as we can and he said it's not about that some brilliant like russian scientist or whoever it was came up with a warp drive theory of bending space time around the spacecraft he said so literally you're not moving at all you're just bending space and time he said so theoretically uh, you could have a twin go into this thing, and for the twin, it may be you know only a couple weeks, but for the person on the outside that's not on the inside, it may be you know seventy years. He said so. That version Close. could be going into the future. He said we can't go into the past. He said if we could go into the past, he said it would be dangerous. Was, where is that? Oh, well, it's you, on this you, one. <laughs> my, my, as, hold on. As all rules of time travel, as all tr- wait, wait, rules of time travel was... hold true, Dad, if we I could go into the past, in we would ultimately inf- impact the present and the future. If well, we that's... could do that, so yeah, I, I get you there. We can't, we can't go into the past. We can, we can absolutely analyze the past really, really deeply across so many different planes that we don't do to learn and predict what our futures will be like. Well, you know, he he said he's like, I mean, think about it. He's like, if we learn to go into the past, he's like, think of all the rules and parameters that would have to be in place. He's like, if you went into the past to tell your parents not to do a certain thing that caused a hiccup in the timeline of your parents that caused them maybe to not have a drunken night and have you one night, then you would never have been born, and then you couldn't go in the past to warn your parents about whatever had happened, and then it wouldn't even make any sense. He's like, so... Much harder to go in the past than it is to go in the future. Dear Schnozcast, yeah. I thought you were a comedy podcast. I don't exactly. understand what you're funny. talking about. No, you're right. Let's go back to Napster. No, no, seriously. It's uh, bad science, yeah, that bro. Was, that was science. way more complicated than what we just watched. Uh, <laughs> but just to comment on, I also love Neil deGrasse Tyson, and mm-hmm. that is from, uh, he's got a podcast called Star Talk. Yeah. That he does, and if you if you've never watched it or listened to it, the not. the other gentleman that was sitting with him, yeah, uh, the guy who was just basically saying, right, yeah, yeah, I've seen him in a lot right. of his videos. He's a comedian whose name is Chuck Nice, really really cool guy, but he's definitely not an astrophysicist like Neil deGrasse Tyson, uh-huh. and so he is the comedy relief to his to Neil deGrasse, DeGrasse Tyson's high level. High intellect, very high brow. astrophysicism. Yeah, and so that's why you heard him say, "Like, right, <laughs> yeah, right." <laughs> I mean, that's all you. That, that's all any of us idiots would say if you had to be paired up with Neil deGrasse Tyson while he's expounding on the natures of the universe and everything else. Dude, I I've gone several two three hours just watching real now. My, now the algorithm in my Facebook reels is like. Space Neil deGrasse Tyson, who's the Asian guy with the white hair, like with the po' boy haircut, like that professor. Him, Caitlin Cook. That's in Bong Chun Ho. That's into string theory and all this other stuff, dude. You mix in a little bit of weed with that. Is I Holy off? shit! <laughs> a bit. Is Holy off? shit! You exactly. I would solve a piece put on the spot to come up with a Chinese name. Deep more dive. than I just was. <laughs> I will. So you you clearly get up to some weird shit when you're high. <laughs> L- listen, I, I weird that, or intellectual I, shit. When weird. I when I said like let's go let's talk about rabbit holes, 
Nick was the one. You weren't prepared. Like, <laughs> I'm like, I feel like he's not on board. I don't. I, maybe I should just skip him. I watch cat videos. And Nick took over the entire segment <laughs> with his 25 minute rabbit hole. <laughs> I haven't even gotten to my rabbit hole yet. Here, We're almost at the end of the episode. Here I am. I like sounds and massages, <laughs> and and guys selling Rolexes. Yeah. <laughs> I like to be enlightened. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. I well, love Bob, it. I, yeah, Bob. I guess like you said, it. You're, you're I'm up. Gonna, I'm going to close out the episode. I guess. Uh, so, so my rabbit oh, we, hole. We, we we got time. Do we? Oh yeah. I got uh, 48 minutes. Yeah, we got time. All right. So okay. So <laughs> Let's I, see how this goes. Okay. So you're saying if I could just fucking transition from his 25 minute rabbit hole and make mine like two minutes or less. Then we might be able to have time for the question. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Exactly. Right. Yeah. You technically yeah, because you're going to be that good. Fair. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, however, been, you wasting it. I feel like I feel like I might be uh, you in, wasting it. In, <laughs> it, it engendering some some conversation here. So my rabbit hole has been, um, or the last couple of weeks has been this uh, website called Sky Sky Cave Retreats. Yeah, boy. Jesus fucking Christ! I'm just kidding. Twenty-five I'm minutes joking. of Neil deGrasse Tyson's it's bullshit. A comedy I, I only podcast. got the name of the website out. Uh, so Which this is Sky is, uh, Grave Retreats. Sky Cave Retreats. You're an idiot. C A V E. Um, they they in Oregon. There's a whole lot of places. Yeah, one of them is in in Oregon, um, but they also have places in California and Mexico. But I kind of got down a deep rabbit hole in in these sky caves in which these companies have structures that have been built into the side of a mountain or in the side of a hill in which you can pay to get a dark room. And it is a like a five to seven day retreat where you check into this hotel, you walk into the front door, and once you check in, you have a room that has a bed, it has a shower. It has a sink. It has um, <clears throat> it. You have meals that are delivered to you every day, but it is in complete darkness, and it's called darkness therapy. And Lori and I have been sort of arguing back and forth about this for the last couple of weeks because she maintains that she's like, "Oh, you'd never do that." And I'm like, "I would fucking do that in a heartbeat." And, and the rabbit hole that I felt that I fell down into is uh, Sky Cave is just one of the different places around the world that offers like darkness retreats. But if you want to go for <laughs> like a up up to a week to spend it in total darkness, and it, it's sort of like a, I'm sure you never went to use it, but uh, I we had gotten you a, uh, a certificate to go. To the float I have not because I've been waiting for you guys and I've talked to you several times about it and we're <laughs> supposed to all go. <laughs> all right, I so, was just so thinking about it last week. I was like, I'm just going to grab it and fucking go. Yeah, I don't, it, it doesn't it, sound you, like they're going to fucking go. No, no we, we are going to go, but you definitely don't need to wait for us. But it, it's much it, in much the same vein that just sort of removing. Do I need that piece of paper? Can I just go? No, you need the piece of paper. Oh, okay. It, it shows that you actually, someone's actually paid for it. Uh, <laughs> Show up. No, it was paid for. Yeah, I, I mean, sure. I sure paid you. for it. None of your business. I mean, it's <laughs> that's fine. It. I'm sorry. What kind of business uses sheets of printed paper? It's a fucking gift card instead dude. of a computer system. That, what's your name that was paid for? Oh, Nick. Okay, yeah, I show that you're on the account. No, here's a crinkled up piece of paper from three years ago. All right, so back to my rabbit hole. Yeah, uh, this is a very similar thing in which, like, they they remove all stimuli. Like, if you go to darkness therapy, so you 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 have no electronics there. It's just you and the dark. And so, I, I fell down a deep rabbit hole with watching the videos from, like, basically people will pay to do this, and they'll be in there, and and some of them, like, log uh, blogs about their experience in there, and you could read them. But when they get out of it, they've they've gone through like seven days of having no other stimuli, and and their and your mind just kind of goes to different places, and that's all you have. Like there's no the passage of time is not there for you. Um, there's no other stimuli. There's no other input coming in. 
And when they come out of it, they come out with, uh, with some serious uh, blindfolds on, and then they slowly take the blindfolds off, and they interview them about their feeling about then seeing, like, light, color, the world. And some of these people are, like, breaking down into tears and talking about what it, what it was like for them in in a week of darkness therapy and to come out and how they've sort of rethought some things that they that that heretofore were not very important to them that are very important now and so that i i i think i've watched every single one of the videos of these people coming out of the sky cave and i am utterly convinced that were it any closer than oregon i would Absolutely, or to go and do it for a week. You know, I have room darkening shades and blinds in my room. If you room want to go, you want to go sit not, in there for a week, you're welcome. Not, not the same. It's in the middle of a mountain with no windows and no light period. Why do you got to be in the middle of a mountain? Just go in the dark. No, because there's no light period for one week. One week solid. Okay, you're not going to get it. room uh, darkening shades are not the same. So you can't. You don't have like a Pretty candle dark. or anything. You're just nothing. So how are you nothing. blogging about things in the? Is it just scribbles? Yeah, I or or you're um, you're doing a voice recording. Oh, okay. What about the light from the what little red set, record light? I was saying, what if you set that down? <laughs> you can't find it. <laughs> what how do you know? If you're, how do you know if you're track of the point of this? No, know, <laughs> hold on, hold on. No, I don't think I am. I, I think, don't think I am. One how bit. How do I do you, don't know how they blogged about it. I wasn't there. How do you know when to stop wiping your ass? Maybe they wrote about it after the fact. I do not. Know. <laughs> how do you find your food? <laughs> they deliver it to you. There's like a little, literally. It's, they it's, it. You ever see Papillon? You ever see Papillon? No, but either way. Papillon is a great Papillon. Steve McQueen film in which he's in prison for years, and they give him his food in the complete darkness through a hole in the wall. They just fucking slide a tray through. Yeah, how do you find, so you have to find that hole? And then yes. maybe you, you could step on all that, your food. The whole first day of darkness therapy is figuring Still out here. your room and where things are. So that you, yeah, can, you can basically find, find your way to where the sink and is, so where the shower is, where your bed is, and where, so, the, where the food hole is. So you're blindly grabbing food that you don't even know what it is and, and yes. slapping it across your That's, face? Well, hopefully you're putting it in your mouth, but... Ooh, I, what the fuck? What if it's squid or something I don't want to eat? <laughs> the, this is a place... Hold on. This is a place that you've paid for. You're not in jail. They, you've yeah, paid for exactly. actual They're gonna food. They're going to serve you... They're going to serve you food Yeah, they you talk to you about for. what your, your menu is going to be. Right. So okay, the other thing but, you can't do is you, there's no point in silverware because you can't feel it or see it or to cut anything. So you're just basically eating with your hands. But you still haven't answered one thing. What's that? How about pooping? There, there's a shitter. I Absolutely. understand that there were probably you gotta, be you got to find your way to the shitter just like you've got to find your way to the sink and, and the shower. So how do you know if and... you're completely wiped or not wiped? I've never been there, so I, I cannot comment on that. <laughs> okay. You just take your finger and you run it over and... <laughs> Like, oh, no. You taste I your think, food. You're I think like, does, a, does my I food think it's taste really... some shit? Perhaps I didn't wipe good enough. <laughs> Got to adjust. Time to wipe more. Dude, you imagine how Next many, question. You imagine how many face hairs you're going to come out of that <laughs> cave with? <laughs> face hairs. Bob's always like, oh, man, I just found that Lori was like, you had this one giant hair sticking on the side of your head. If he was stuck in darkness for two weeks, he'd come out looking insane. So hold on. It's not two weeks. It's It's one. These people don't go for It's like five or seven days. And Mary, Mary wants to know why not just a closet, a closet for seven days. It would that would can, work. Can you if, create if you total could, if, darkness again? Open, yeah. You can't. Yeah, yeah. That's the problem. But you, 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 you really couldn't. A, you need a living space in which you can, like a blind person, like find your bed. Like okay, it's seven paces to the bed. It's three paces to the shower. That's that's what that place does. Beyond Mary's idea of like just live in my closet for a week. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You open the closet door, there's light coming right. in. Why does it have to I be think, a cave? I think it shouldn't be, really I, matter. You never enjoy it anyway. I never enjoy it. No, no. I think it's it's That's pretty. What she says. It's pretty interesting. It would be. I think, I think it's it'd be really, really, really hard. I, I it's think very, it would be very interesting incredibly because hard. your your mind, your mind would go to work immediately. The first, I got to believe, the first day is miserable because you're like. Oh my God! All the things that I'm normally used to being able to see easily and using my my most powerful sense, uh, that gets stripped away from you. But and then you're like you'll be like, okay, so there's no light of any kind. Now it's your mind bombarding you with all the thoughts that you 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 dismiss along the way. But I think 
maybe after the third day, you you start reaching kind of a, a really good spot where you're like, hey, well, how do I make, I have two more days here. I'm getting fed. Uh, how do I make the best of this? And you actually start but hold on. That's, building that's yourself and having good thoughts. That's the thing, Todd. You don't know that you have two days left. You you have no concept of time. I feel like when you... Other than the, the meals think, being delivered well, to you, that's well, the only you're, marker you're sar- of time. Your circadian rhythm gets... Yeah, you, but you, here's the thing. Your circadian rhythm will get screwed up because you're not seeing the day, the light come up, but you will sleep. And even if, you, even if you're off kilter, you might be off slightly. You don't... It, it, I, I think it would be harder for you to have like no sense of time if you were there for a month but on, in a week guess what after whatever time you get there and you go in there and you go into the dark you're gonna fall asleep six eight hours after that no matter what just because you've been up since whatever and so you and you might have a slight offset i know that when mary and i run a mary and I, the interesting thing mary and i were on a cruise once the first cruise we took we took we got an inside cabin where we didn't have a window and when we got there we've went to sleep and we slept till like four in the afternoon. So you're right. You do lose sense of time. We actually, we went to sleep and then woke up at four the next afternoon, but it was like the best 12 or 15 hours of sleep that we'd ever gotten in our lives. Cause like being in total darkness was like, Oh my God, I, I can't believe it's five. We slept till five in the afternoon. That's never happened yeah, before. But, but, I, but I feel, guess what? We didn't, we didn't do that every night. I feel like just, the, just from what I've read from people who have done it, the, the problem is when you wake up, there's no light. When because if if you're in, a, he's you're, arguing with his penis. You're right, Corey. Um, you, so you're in total darkness, but the thing about being in an interior cabin is that you wake up and you're like, oh, I got a great sleep. Now I'm gonna go out on deck and I'm gonna look at the horizon. But there's none of that here. You can't do that. You, you, no, that's, you a, that's what I'm saying. On, when on we did it, ship on the interior uh, cabin with no windows, and you wouldn't leave it for seven days. I feel like a, no, no. I, that's so- what I'm saying. I I get it. That's why we slept so late. But what happened is, we don't get me wrong. Mary and I woke up at like eight or nine o'clock, like we normally would on a vacation. We did that, but it was dark. So we like our our minds and our bodies. Well, shit, it's not light out yet. We should go back. We should sleep a little more. On an, in our in our homes, even with the shades closed, there's no way neither, either one of us could sleep till four in the afternoon. But we had a, a little small sampling of that, and and like I said, I, so I, I'm with I'm agreeing with you wholeheartedly. I'm just saying that you wouldn't you wouldn't lose track so much. You would still you still you have a finite. There's no way you're going to sleep for twenty hours, right? You, at some <laughs> point, you're like maybe the first day, but Probably then you, you'll eventually your body will go challenge accept. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I think I could pull that yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. I think, right. The ch- the challenge is after you sleep for 20 hours, then what? You're not going to wake up for two hours and then sleep for another 20 hours. That's I, the I honestly have no problem Correct. just going right back to sleep. Well, let me put it to you guys because this is the whole point of me I'm asking like you this question, uh, which which is now spanned like far more time than I thought it would. Uh, this is a problem with people make too you, much money. Corey, would you, would you try this? Darkness therapy? Uh, I, I, I'm on the fence, man. I... Part of it does sound. I do it. Good. I knew there, your answer already, Todd. There, I'm asking. It, there's Corey. another part that I'm like I, that. That doesn't seem like it's going to help anything. You don't think? Oh, you wouldn't come to any beneficial uh, realization or enlightenment from from doing it. No, I, I, because I'm such a routine person. Have have everything. It's always the same. All right then. I guess I'm done with my answer. Yeah. I'm well, waiting think, for your answer. I think it's a great time answer. to end the episode. Thank you guys for tuning in. <laughs> end of a freaking solid freaking We'll see you next weekend. Peace out.